Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Brent Willis from Voyager Pharmaceuticals. How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I think we should just hit the ground running here. We enjoyed you on Investor Talk today. And specifically, the most dramatic item you mentioned to our audience was that you recently had a valuation placed on Voyager Pharmaceuticals of $344 million, and yet your market cap is $11 million. Is that correct? Yeah, we're, uh, that's correct. We're, we're just uh, marching through the markets here, and uh, you know, we, can't, we can't worry too much about our, our market cap. We just got to focus on uh, our milestones and keep hitting them, so it'll come. And and speaking of milestones, you're in a contrast industry, barium, iodine, contrast. Is that correct? That's right. And you were talking about how this industry, similar to the critical materials, many of the critical materials we cover, which is our audience, they love this. Um, China is controlling a lot of these uh, contrast output products like iodine, and it's creating a real fury out there for hospitalized hospitals not being able to access this. Is that correct? That's right. So, uh, you know, in radiology, uh, contrast is used to uh, allow the doctor to uh, to detect the disease and tumors and things that are wrong with you inside your body. And uh, if you can't go in and get those scans and those problems uh, get worse and uh, people are passing away because they can't go in and get their scans done, they're being canceled across North America. And uh, the reason for that is because uh, the majority of uh, iodinated contrast comes out of China. And uh, we have supply chain issues with uh, barium sulfate. And it's a supply chain issue. And it's very foretelling if, when we're looking at uh, our future when we cannot supply our own uh, hospitals with needed, very much needed drugs just based on a few port closures in China. So it uh, really highlights the importance of domestic supply and uh, moving forward with uh, domestic production. And of course, you know, I love, uh, just Brent as an aside, I love California investors. They go, you know, climate change matters to us. So they went in and became ESG investors, went in, bought and held. So all of us baby boomers and older Gen Xs that are going to be lining up for these types of processes, we may want to invest in helping support you in building the supply chain. And to me, that's what that sounds credible. Yeah, absolutely. And we have a very uh, green agenda with our company too. We're, uh, you know, our whole Francis Creek project is uh, very low impact on the environment. Uh, we're eliminating the use of water and uh, we're, uh, we're very environmentally focused in that sense. Um, we have a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, stakeholder uh, with our First Nations support, and uh, and uh, we're very conscious of uh, ESG and uh, what it means for a company. And let's just talk about barium prices. Did you just did I hear you correctly saying that barium has gone from thirty eight hundred to seventeen thousand dollars? Is this U.S. Canadian? And for how much of uh, how much barium are we talking about? Yeah, we're 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 looking at sourcing. Uh, so we're importing uh, uh, USP pharmaceutical grade barium sulfate, and uh, that price has gone up to seventeen thousand dollars a ton. Uh, we're looking at ordering uh, for that. We're going to pay that for, to bring it in and uh, to ensure that we have uh, our supply chain intact to move our initial sales off the ground. We have barite on the ground. We, we do have enough supply to get our, our production launched. And uh, But it really puts a, a focus on how important it is to, uh, to get our Francis Creek project off the ground and moving forward. And uh, we're looking at building a smaller plant, something that uh, we hope will cost less than $2 million, and almost like a bench scale uh, processing to do up to, you know, three to three to four kilograms an hour, which uh, with our initial product rollout, we're looking at uh, 300 bottles an hour, and that's enough to generate uh, uh, cash flow in the hundreds of thousands a month once we, uh, we establish our markets. So uh, I think that's gonna be our first phase is uh, start small, uh, low capex, get our products to market in Canada, 
Uh, keep working with the FDA. We're going to get into the uh, U.S. market uh, down the road. We're not going to put any timelines on that. We've had uh, very positive meetings with the FDA, but uh, it's hard to put a timeline on. They're working through regulatory pathways for us to try to figure out uh, how they're going to uh, regulate this this product that used to be a drug that was recently uh, uh, ruled on to be a device. So there's uh, some issues there that the FDA still needs to work through. Well, Brent, thank you so much for the update. Please, next news release. I want you on Investor Intel immediately. All right. Thank you.